Greetings everyone and welcome back. So let's go ahead and create a new Laravel application. Just going to, to head over to my desktop and I'll create a new application on my desktop. I'll be using Composer. You can use any other way. There are so many ways to create a Laravel application. You can just use any other way to create an application. I'm going to say to use Composer on my side. So Composer create project. And I'll just call it uh, uh, data uh, tables. The application creation just going to take some minutes. So I'll pause the video. Then when it's done, I'll come back. Right, the application is successfully created. And now I'm just going to navigate into the folder that we've just created our application in and start my Visual Studio code inside the same fold. So say CD in data tables. And inside here, we'll just say code then period and that should open the folder inside the Visual Studio code. I'll be using the Visual Studio code editor. You can use the editor of your choice, but as for me, I'll be using the Visual Studio Code Editor from Microsoft. After that, I'm going to launch my integrated terminal inside the Visual Studio Code. Just going to give it some second to start up and it starts up. When it starts up, I'm just going to serve the PHP application or PHP Laravel application that we've just created. So by using PHP and and serve, just use the normal uh, server and could not open file arts and I have a typo I'm missing some R on the arts and, and there we have we are it's now at the application it's it's, it's running on port 8000 on our local host so uh, I'll just copy this all of it and I'll I'll go to my browser here. I'll just paste the link. Of course, you could have just click on the on the link and to, to open. Now here we are. We already have a fresh Laravel application installed and running. So let's go ahead and uh, start modifying the application. So what I'm going to do inside the resources and views, I'll create a folder here. I'll just call it admin for now. And in the admin, I'm just going to create another file. And this file, I'm just going to call it um, employee uh, list. And it will be a blade, blade file. And uh, to have an extension of uh, PHP, as you remember, if you're creating Laravel blade views, it means we have to uh suffix them with uh, the blade before the php extension after that, i'll still create another file inside the same folder and this file will be employee lists and i'll call it partial we will have partial file and still it's gonna be a blade and with php extension like that uh what i can do for now here i'm just going to say php i just want to print something uh php i don't need to to I don't need to terminate the PHP though, but no problem. I'm just going to echo employees like that. I'll tokenize my line. And after that, what I will do next, I'll create a controller. So what I'm going to do, I'll add a new terminal here. I'll leave the one which is running our server here and I'll create a new terminal here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a controller. So I'm going 
say make controller and this controller is going to be inside uh, employee folder inside the controller so I'm just going to say employee then uh, employee controller sorry I have a typo again which is normal so I'm just going to say to have employee controller like that just going to create it and it's already created and after creating the employee controller file what I else I'm going to do I'm going to go into the, the route and here into the web either PHP I'm going to remove the initial file the initial contents of that file and what I'm going to do I'm going to or require the the file that we just created which is the employee controller this one so I'm just going to say use and it should be uh, I, my uh, code it is it's acting up but no worries it should just work fine so what I'm going to say I have use then I will use the up and I will navigate to the controller that we just created right now. So I'm going to say up then HTTP then oh, it's inside controllers and inside controllers now we have the employee controller. Like that, and after that, we can just create the first route and to say route. And this one should be get. And what I'm going to say, I'll have a new. Uh, endpoint here I'm just going to say uh, get employees or I'll the first one I'll just leave it like that and this one will be employee controller and then the method will be get employee list like that same as the name of the the name of the route that we're going to create so after that what I'm going to do I'm going to navigate to the controller itself the control the employee controller that we created the employee controller so it's here and there we go what I'm going to do I'll create this uh, uh this method is the action that we're going to create here and what I can do just going to say a public method can okay, use this one and going to create that one no worries just going to have the request objects coming in let's request uh, like that and now what we're going to do here we're just going to return the employee list page that we created in our views into the views in admin we have the employee list so here all i do just a simple return view which should be inside the views then admin and then employee employee underscore list I like think I'm going to save that and then in the employee list we just have an echo as employee list we're going back to your browser and see if we refresh we should get now the new target class target class employee controller does not exist of course it should be it should be uh, 
controllers then employee and employee control it should be inside a folder that was my mistake and also another thing which is not found it's employee list employee list that's a very big typo inside our controller should be employee employee list like that sure enough that one should work out and there we are now we have the employee list we're going to stop here uh in this lecture when we come back we'll continue from there thank you very much for being with me on this one i'll see you on the next one